Before you buy Starlink, I have 10 tips for you that you might want to consider. So, number one is the actual setup of Starlink when it arrives. It's just super easy. It comes in the box and everything is connected in the box. So basically you could just sort of take this sheet out of the box and plug it in the PowerPoint and you'd be done. Now it's not quite that simple of course, but that's how it comes delivered. Now I made a video on how to install it and what happens, which is linked there. And um, that is, that's basically it, right? Now, when it comes to actually installing it, like on the roof here, you gotta find the best spot, which you use the app for, which I'll talk about later in this video as well. That can be a bit tricky, figuring out where to put it and how to install it properly and how to use conduit and all those sort of things. But there are services that will do that for you as well. But actually getting it up and running, super easy. It's really, really simple. And it, it works first time. You just connect it via the app and it takes about five minutes and you're done. Hmm, it's very cool. Number two is the actual speed of the rollout of more satellites. It's incredibly fast and the response is as well. So for example, there was an earthquake recently in Tonga that cut off the internet. And within a few days, Starlink was offered to actually service Tonga there as well, which is just incredible. Like it, it, it's just such a groundbreaking uh, piece of equipment. So that's a big plus for Starlink as well. So my third observation or tip or whatever you want to call it is that, hmm, I'm not sure about the hardware. Now this works beautifully as I just mentioned, but it's getting more and more proprietary. So what I mean is that the new square dishy, for example, you cannot hook it in to a LAN network without an adapter. Now, I'm just wondering what's gonna happen further down the track as it gets more and more popular. Is Starlink gonna push their own hardware? I'm not sure, but it's certainly something to watch out for because this was very easy to connect to my whole Unify network. Again, I created a video on that, which is up there again. Um, but yeah, I'm just you know, a bit of caution because are they gonna start selling other hardware, routers that can only work with the Starlink dishy? Are we gonna start seeing that you need like, almost like the Apple universe or dongles everywhere? I'm not sure. Um, I'm not a big fan of them changing the new plug. I'm sure there's technical reasons for it as well, but it looks like a micro USB, I'm sure it's not. But you need to have this proprietary adapter to be able to plug dishy into your own network. And unless you just want one router, well, you probably want to plug in an ethernet cable to it. So I'm a little bit cautious about what's going to happen with the hardware as we get further out of the track and it gets more and more popular. Now we're going to have to cut costs somewhere because well, it's expensive creating these things and we don't want to pay that much for it. But still, I'm hoping they're going to stick to standards that we all uh, know and love. Do you like hosting your own stuff on your own server at home? Do you like, you know, giving out your IP address or hosting a website or whatever it might be? Well, you can't. Um, <laughs> Starlink uses something called Carrier Grade Network or CGNet and well it means that Starlink only has a pool of IPv4 addresses so, you know, so 212.62.42.5 whatever they might be and they only have a pool of those which is not enough for say the hundreds of thousands of users that they want so everybody shares these IP addresses so that's Carrier Grade Network which means that when you are you know, looking at the internet from the inside out, well, it looks like you have a specific IP address, but you're sharing that with lots and lots and lots of other people. For example, if you want to host your Plex server, so I have you know, my network here and there's a Plex server that runs my movies that I've you know, ripped off my DVDs and put on a hard drive. If I wanted to host those, as in watch them when I'm outside of my local network, well, I can't because Plex doesn't have an external IP address that is unique to me, so I can't actually do that. Now, there are ways around this, and they're very complicated and technically you know, advanced, I'd say, not something you just set up. So that's definitely a disadvantage. Now, hopefully with IPv6, you know, like GUID type IP addresses, that won't be a problem because there'll be enough for everybody. But while we're still using IPv4, um, it's not gonna work. So that's definitely something you wanna take into consideration if you wanna host anything uh, on your Starlink connection. However, number five is that you can get 5G for free. Yes, if you tick that little box when you order your Starlink dishy and your whole setup, it comes linked up to the 5G network uh, for your choice of carrier and you can use it for free. It's really cool. Also, it's not true, sorry. All right, number six. As you can tell, I live in the middle of nowhere, I live on a farm, which is there, and I'm in a remote community. 
Um, and this is probably the thing that excites me the most, and that is the possibilities for these remote locations. Now, I'm not even that remote. I have a town only like 10 minutes away, but you can get Starlink anywhere. If you have a power supply of some sort, it could be even be you know solar powered batteries, you can run Starlink. Now there's still a few areas that aren't legally allowed to run Starlink, and there's still a few you know areas in the ocean, whatever. But the remote communities that will benefit from this is just so cool. I've read a ton of stories about uh, remote uh, Native American communities, Canadian communities, all those sort of really really remote parts of the world where you can get super fast internet connection, and that is so cool. That is probably the best thing about Starlink is that the possibilities that it gives. Now I was initially on like a via sat something satellite connection that I could barely do a voice call on and download a web page. And then we got a little bit better, a little bit better, and now it's like we, we have better internet here than about 80% of other Australians. It's just remarkable. So that is number six, and it's tip top. Number seven is support. Now with regular ISPs, you can usually call a phone number and someone will pick up and they can probably guide you through if you have a question or whatever. Yeah, not with Starlink. Basically, support is FAQs. There's a whole long list of things that you, your potential questions that they have answers for. You have your online account where you can see some things, but the rest you're pretty much left with sending them a message. Now, I haven't used support, but I have seen many stories of varying degrees of success. So sometimes they reply very fast and you get solved, resolved really quickly. Sometimes not so much, like for example, this tweet here from one of my uh, people on Twitter which basically says it took four days and still no reply, right? So it's very hit and miss, and that's probably one of the main risks if you're not very technical, if you're not very happy installing things yourself and figuring out and debugging, it's gonna be a little bit tricky finding support for it. The best place I've found is actually Reddit. There's a Starlink subreddit, which has a lot of very clever people and a lot of uh, support for various questions or whatever. Now, yes, a lot of it is, hey, I got this this year, I installed it, but there's also people asking questions about the setup and technical questions as well. So I would say uh, support, not quite there yet. Hopefully it gets better in the future. So number eight is the future promise of the technology. Now currently, there's a lot of areas that can't be covered, but very soon there's gonna be satellites that can talk to each other, so inter-satellite connect, uh, connectivity or communication between Starlink satellites, and that means that you can use it pretty much everywhere. Now the latency is gonna go up a bit because you gotta travel through more satellites, for example, if you're in the middle of the Pacific Ocean, or if you're in the middle of Antarctica, basically somewhere where the satellites can't see a substation, you know, that's how it works, you connect to the satellite, they connect to the substation, so there's a really big promise of the infrastructure being pretty much unbreakable, I'd say, because if a satellite goes down, you just use another satellite um, that connects to, again, satellites that can be more ground stations. So there's huge potential for the infrastructure once it's all up and running. Now, having said that, if you are an astronomer and you like looking at stars, there is a bit of controversy about all of these satellites actually interfering with the night sky and what stars look like. Um, there's a lot of satellites whizzing about, so, um, Currently, my need for fast internet where I live kind of outweighs that, but I understand the argument and, um, well, that could be one thing. But yeah, I still think the, 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 the technology is just superb. All right, number nine is the Starlink app. This is both good and bad because it's really useful to have an app that you can see whether it's online and you can see the, you can do a speed test up to, to Starlink and you can, uh, you can pack up the dish if you need to move it or you can reset it or you can access your account, all those sort of things. That's really handy. However, I have found that the, there's a, uh, a stats button, which you can't see, but there it is. And that has an outages button and it's quite optimistic. At times it'll say that there's nothing happened in the last 12 hours, even though I know I've been on Zoom calls or been using whatever and it's dropped out. That's not just my network and me, I've seen this other places, especially on Reddit as well. So the Starlink app, yeah, it's good, but it, I don't think it gives you quite the right, um, let's say, view of the world. Now, if you have the Starlink router, the Wi-Fi router, Apparently you get better speed than if you don't on the speed test that's in it. If you use other apps for speed testing, you get about the same result every time or roughly. So I don't know about this Starlink app. I, I, I use it occasionally, but it's certainly not the one that gives me the right worldview of how my network is performing. 
If you liked the video and you enjoyed the tips and the content and it helps you, well, why not consider subscribing? Yeah, I like my subscribers. I reply to all comments as well, so comment below and uh, even give it a like or whatever, thumbs up, is that what it is? And, um, and thanks for watching. And finally, number 10 observation is that there is only really one plan currently. You get Starlink. Now they have announced Starlink Premium, which is five times the price. So that's not really for you and me and the average consumer. It's for you know institutions or schools or businesses or whatever. I'm hoping they're gonna have a few more plans so that it gets accessible to more people. That'll probably come as the equipment comes down in price. But imagine you had like a 100 megabit plan, a 500 megabit, and maybe even a gigabit plan when we have enough satellites. That would be fantastic. But currently, one plan and uh, it's one price. It's $99 US a month, $139 Australian or whatever it is in your currency where you are. So I'm hoping there'll be more plans coming. So that's number 10. Llamas don't have Starlink yet. Have you girls? You got Starlink? Hi! They're not sure. So that's my 10 tips. I hope you can uh, use some of them and actually make an informed purchase of Starlink if you choose to go down that path. Um, this is based on my four and a half months roughly of experience with Starlink. And for me, it's been life changing, but there are certain concerns, of course, as I've mentioned in some of the points. So um, please let me know if you have other considerations, other things that you think are important that I should have mentioned down below in the comments. And again, if you enjoy the video, please subscribe, give it a like, and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.